Hello and welcome everybody to the Rundown. This is the live edition of the Rundown Championship Week, the Schmodown Rundown Movie Trivia Schmodown fans. You are welcome into our asylum. We are live on Collider Podcast right now. I am your host, Brad Gilmore. I am joined by and going to be joined by a series of illustrious guests. But first, I need to introduce my cohort, my partner in crime, I guess would be an apropos description of him right now. He looks a little bit guilty. He is... Frank Janish. Yeah, that's me. I'm guilty of of winning the Schmodown Schmodown. So that is true. Congratulations. That's to you. right. That's what, right the thing. biggest win of the week in terms of Schmodown world. <laughs> right. Yeah. Definitely. This you. Is the, beating. This is the one to watch. If you didn't see yeah. it, you missed out on the biggest one of the week. Yeah. Beating Chris Galiski was is a high high you know award. No one else can say that. No one else can say they beat Chris. That's Only true. I did. And, Only and you're undefeated. But yeah, let's move on. Right. Let's also shout out our producer extraordinaire. I accidentally called him Christofferson Repilio Vicente mm. Fox earlier this week, but he is Chris Clark. Chris, how are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. This week was one in a million. It was fantastic, and this is going to rock. With, with, with the Schmodown champion, we're going to be joined by more champions. This is just going to be a champion free-for-all. It's going to be fantastic, Brad. And you referenced him, so allow me to introduce... And the new Schmodown Singles Champion, William the Beast Bibiani. How you doing, Bibs? Hey, it's Bibs. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Congrats, Congrats, champ. How's it feel? You are finally. Now, when you first started in this league, when you first started in your very first match, you were pegged. The tail was pinned on the proverbial donkey that you would eventually be the singles division champion. And now that prophecy has come true. How do you feel, sir? You know, I, I, I feel good, but I, I, it still doesn't quite feel real. You know, uh, we record these things a little in advance. So for a while, I couldn't tell anyone about it. And I was the champ, but I wasn't the champ. <laughs> you know, so it was really. Yeah. Uh, listen, I'm going to be perfectly honest here. You know, dropping all kayfabe and kind of competitive atmosphere and everything. Um, I literally joined the Schmodown to make friends. <laughs> like, that's why I was here. Um, so the, the belt was like cool, but it wasn't like my initial goal. I just wanted to be part of this wonderful community. Um, right. and then it turned out I was pretty good at the game and everyone kind of got me hyped up a bit and that set me on this weird path of self-discovery. And now it, it's kind of fitting for me that I finally have the belt after I dropped all of the drama and kind of pretty much all of the persona and just played it like I wanted to play it. I was myself. And so like the beast doesn't have this belt. I have this belt and I have this belt as someone who just loves the game and loves the community. So are you, are you, that's great for me. Are you saying the beast, the character is, is dead? Or he's no, just the, taking a sleep. Taking a sleep. The beast, the beast is a nickname more than anything else. The gotcha. beast is a catchphrase um, and, and a hell of a lot of fun. But, you know, the beast got developed as, you know, uh, kind of my monster side, which is why a lot of my early entrances were very <laughs> horror centric. That's true. Um, and I didn't always want to be that. I actually wanted to be the wacky intro guy. It just happened in my first intro was you know kind of dark and threatening and people like that so i just kept doing that um so like the beast is in here somewhere and he might come out a bit like i let him out a bit when uh i had my post-match uh interview with andraco before our match you know yeah. a little bit of atmosphere a little awkward smack talk but uh no you're you're talking to bibs more often than not nowadays when you're when you're talking to me on the schmo down i i'm just i just love doing this i love being here i love getting people excited about movie trivia. I love hanging out and competing with people who love movies as much, if not more than I do. Um, that's the sweet spot here. That's, that's the best part of all of this. And that's the part I love the most. But when did though, I mean, I know you said you, you, you started to, you know, you joined the Schmodown to make friends and to be a part of something, to be a part of an experience and to have, you know, have a little fun. But at some point, the championship must have come within your within you know your your desires. It, it must have ended up on your Christmas list at some point somewhere. I mean, when look, when did you say I want to be champ? 
You know, I, um, when people told me I would. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can do that? That's a thing like, here? <laughs> like, that's kind of like early on. Like, I, I wasn't, like, really heavily into sports. There's actually, like, an interesting sort of schism, I think, between a lot of the Schmodown players, the ones who were really into sports and are really into that competitive atmosphere and that sense of not just competition, but proving you're the best. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's great. And that's totally, like, a valid way to approach it but then there's also a lot of people uh who are at the showdown who come from it from they like movies they come from from the more artistic side i'm a theater kid who went to film school so i had a different angle but i caught that sports bug and like my first year year and a half or so at the showdown i was really kind of exploring that side of it saying is this what i want to do is this the kind of player i want to be and it was kind of fun, but I also kind of just didn't necessarily con – like, that's not the biggest part of me. That's just this part of me that comes out, like, when I'm playing Overwatch and I'm getting, like, royally pwned. Like, that, <laughs> that – I have that in there. But really, the thing that I like the most and what allows me to get the most out of the Schmodown is coming at it from a positive perspective and just having a really, really good time. Um, I love movies. I love movie trivia. I've always loved movie trivia. I found a place – that's full of people who feel the same way. And that's the most exciting thing, whether it's my fellow competitors, whether it's people behind the scenes, whether it's people who watch, that's the part I enjoy the most. And I have trouble now getting the smile off my face. Like I just like being a part of it and the smack talk and the anger and the I'm the best and you're not kind of stuff. That's nice and all, but I just, that's just not me. I just can't do it consistently i have it's hard for me to do that so but, i don't you know but when you talk about competition right and 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 wanting and you wanted the championship as soon as people told you that it might be a, a possibility like you should be the champion would you have would this victory have been sweeter for you hmm. if you had won the championship from sam levine that is an interesting question i don't know about sweeter because I think if I had played someone with whom I had no history, maybe it would be a huge difference. Like if I played it against Irwin, which would have been a hell of a match. He's really, really tough. But, yeah. you know, he's newer, and I don't know him as well as I know Mark Andreco. Mark Andreco, obviously, we had our first match together, and it was an epic match, and we both got a lot of buildup and buzz from it. And we've, I mean, we're not, like, close friends or anything, but, like, we, we were friends, and... Getting to have that rematch and have that be the championship was so kind of poetic in a way that it really took the sting off of not playing my rematch against Sam. Uh, Sam is another competitor who I love. I think there's a real legitimate argument to be made that he is, at the moment, uh, uh, the, the greatest of all time. Yeah. Um, the, the, the goat, if you will. The goat. The goat. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But, uh, you know, again, I don't look at it from the sporting scenario where the important thing is you have to take the belt from a champion. I think the important thing from a competitive perspective is that you prove that you, you know, and, and again, every game is a, is a bit of luck involved. But ultimately, what you're trying to prove is that you know more movie trivia than anyone else in the league. Sam isn't in the league, so that's not really an issue. I, I played against the person who had proved that he knew more trivia than anyone else in the league except for me. So the rematch was pretty sweet. I think we're at an interesting time in the league where you know both the both the singles and teams belts have been vacated. So I think our approach to who's who's a valid champion, who's not, is definitely a huge question amongst many of the fans. And you bring up an interesting point there, Biz, that they're just not in the league. It just it's not a thing. So how can you um, com combat that? Yeah. It, it, so I, yeah, I take uh, it's 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 hard for me to see people say, well, he's not the valid champ, or you know, the team champs they're not valid because they didn't beat the person who had it before. Well. You know, I think part of the argument also is they're not in the league. And, you know, if they were so good, then, you know, maybe they were not afraid to lose. That's an argument I hear a lot that Sam was afraid to lose. Um, well, you know, well, then he shouldn't have been champ. He was afraid to lose. 
Well, here's the, question, here's the question you want me to think about. Um, so we're, in a, we're at a point now. Well, there is a champion. There's me. But before me, there was no champion. Talk, talk your talk, Bibbs. Talk <laughs> your talk. This <laughs> is your <laughs> moment. There is a champ. His name is William Bibby. <laughs> but there was this brief period between when Sam left and when I made my move. And there was no champion. And this air of illegitimacy I don't understand. As a champion, it is his prerogative. He could leave any time he wanted to. What if he just moved right. across the country? He could have just done it. Right. There was a time in every sporting event when there was no champ. Usually it's at the beginning. That doesn't mean the first champ is illegitimate. That's, that's not the issue for me. Uh, so, yeah, I, I think you just have to prove that you're better at movie trivia than the rest. And there is a legitimate argument to be made because, again, you never know a question is going to get asked that, you know, maybe Rachel is better than I am. I think there's a great argument to be made for that. Look at her stats, Frank. Yes. But yes. Uh, uh, this is the way it, paid, it played out. And I have had the opportunity to prove that I am currently the best in movie trivia in the singles league. I don't think that's illegitimate. I just think that's the, that's the league as it is now. If Sam came back, I would love to play him again. And I would love to, to prove in more reasonable circumstances uh, that, uh, that I, I could best him. You know, it's... I just, want to say, I just want to make one thing abundantly clear. In my original match with Sam, at the end of it, I sent him out as my avatar. I was very explicit about this. I was very specific. I specifically said, go on out there, and, and win for the both of us. And not only did he win singles, he won teams. Yeah. He was my avatar. I said, I want to be the first <laughs> person to hold both those belts simultaneously. Sam did that kind of for me. <laughs> yes. So really, <laughs> I won a bunch of times. Um, the one thing I wanted to say lastly about this was, it's you know, you talk about who won the World Series last year, and it's like, well... Oh, the they're Houston not, Astros did, by the way. I'm just going to throw that out there. The Houston, well, I was like, well, Houston guess Astros. what? They're not really the champs because they didn't beat the 27 Yankees. Because, you know, that's that's who they should have You know? And there's, right, it's like, right. how can you, you know, I mean, it's, they won it's that the, it's year. The gold, and, it's the Golden State, uh, you know, Bulls comparison. Like, right. you know, well, the Bulls are better. They might only won 72, but they won the championship. It's a dumb argument. If I can it be is. honest, yeah. it's a dumb it's, argument. Did it's a pointless Rocky, one. Did you guys see Rocky Balboa? I, of course. Yeah. Okay, well, just just confirming. The plot of Rocky Balboa is that Rocky has long since retired and there's a new champ out there and some nerds ran the numbers, did the stats, and said that if they fought in their prime, the current champ would have lost against the old champ and that really messes with the new champ's head. Really, the only person you're fighting, and this is another theme of Rocky, is, is yourself. Mm -hmm. oh. You're doing the best you can. And... If you do that under the right circumstances, on the right day, against the right opponent, you can be champion. Anyone could be champion. You know, it's, it's like, uh, like a Slumdog Millionaire is another example. He was asked questions that just by living his life, he happened to know the answer to those. Like perfectly, even though he didn't have a large education. So it all boils down to a little bit of faith. And I don't think that any champion in the league right now anyone you know anyone entering a spot that is vacated by sam levine is illegitimate and i would be saying the exact same thing if mark andreco won i would be saying the exact same thing it would be totally earned the circumstances are a little unusual but they are perfectly valid circumstances and i think it's perfectly valid to be a little bummed out that we didn't get a levine match or the above the line match for shy wolves i think it's perfectly fine to be bummed about that because it would have been great matches nonetheless. Um, but at the same time, you know, you play who's in front of you. And a lot of this game, while there's a lot of luck involved, it's also you are not just playing the person across from you. are playing the questions that come at you. And so when you look at numbers for Rachel, you bibs, for teams above the line, Shirewolves, you know, they have earned it by giving their history in the league and their divisions. And it's just they're good. And yeah, well, no, no. Okay, play. hold on. You know? Let's stop. Bro. Let's just stop this silliness for a second. Like, let's honestly stop the silliness. If I didn't see anybody saying that you're an illegitimate champion, Bibbs, but look, he was the MVP of the free for all. 
right, has gone perfect in the first round umpteenth times. I don't even remember how many, but I know that you've gone perfect before. You've had one of the greatest runs in the Schmodown ever. You've been one of the most beloved characters in the Schmodown ever. Oh, and by the way, uh, you were going to play Sam Levine. Sam Levine dropped out. You played a guy who won a number one contenders match who was completely legitimate in Mark Andreco, and you beat him. You beat him in the third round. All right. And it came down to the last round. question. It was, uh, I mean, the final round. I'm sorry, but it was. It came down to the very last question, and and you beat him. I mean, that's it's a dumb argument. And then I see some people, and I don't. I'm not calling you dumb people who think that, but I'm saying it's a dumb argument. But some people said, uh, I'm gonna shout out to Ryan. I think it's Kramer in the chat yeah. said, I think after a defense, it would be more legitimized. Well, th well, there's been champions who have won in the Schmodown before and not defended it. Is that correct? Not like successfully Roka. defended, Roka like John Roca. But well, he was a John legitimate champ, apparently. No, 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 yeah. he's not. Now he's not. Right. Now, now he this is argument, not. Yeah, exactly. I, yeah. That's just, I, I'm, I'm getting a little too hot about it, but I just yeah. want to say, Bibbs, <laughs> yeah. you are more than legitimate. You are well, more yeah. than legitimate. Yes. Free this red. conversation, by the way, this whole conversation that we've been having ever since Sam retired uh, has been right. in a weird way, I think, kind of unfair to Sam because it really does imply that once you're in the Schmodown, you are not allowed to leave. <laughs> right yeah like you're, you're shackled to the to the schmodown like and that's it and and you're there forever you can do whatever the hell he wants and that is perfectly fine and the schmodown lives on and the competitions keep going you know i, I looked at my andreco match as my first title defense because he would have been next apparently like if i had beaten sam i would have fought andreco next yeah, yeah right right no, you would. I mean, you would have because Andreco went on to beat Irwin anyway. So, um, Frank, let's get to the match here real quick, though. Let's talk about the actual match, the championship match. What were Bibiani's stats throughout this match? Give lay oh, it on us. That's the well, yeah. I'll just lay it all out here for Bibiani. He went eleven of seventeen for sixty-five percent correct. Andreco was fifteen of twenty-three. There is that disparity because of his uh, speed round play. And uh, Andreco was sixty-five for sixty-five point two two percent. So Andreco, although uh, he did lose the match, he had a slightly higher accuracy rate. But as we found out so many times in the Schmodown, it comes down to that final round, the final ten available points, and really. Um, that's what that's what saved Bibbs in this match. And there's another point in the match that uh, I want to talk about because had it played differently, um, it, Bibbs would not be sitting here as the champ. And well, that's we'll bring how, that up now. Yeah. Bring it up now. Okay. So there's, there's a point in the second round, and it's in Draco's last question, and it, he was talking about what's uh, the bub not bud situation, right? Right. And one letter completely changes the entire match because in Draco, had he said it correctly uh, or maybe even remembered it correctly, uh, he would have been up he would have been up seven points. And then the rest of the match plays out. He would have had a lead as big as eight points going into the final round. And Bibbs, even if he got ten points, and Draco would have won it on his three-pointer. So that's how tight this championship match was. Uh, it's one of the best title matches we've ever seen. And uh, it was, I don't know how Andreco feels about this loss, but I can't imagine very good. <laughs> well, I actually have, I have a question about that because I'm, you know, I'm playing the match. Yeah. And, you know, there's all this like buildup from our first match where only one question was got wrong the entire time. So as soon as we missed a couple of questions, a part of me was just like, well, everyone's going to be disappointed now. Uh, but like, was it a good match? Was it a good title match? Because oh, I don't yeah. feel like I didn't play. I don't feel like neither of us played our very best. They just no, that's were on the same level the whole time. That's true, and but I think being on the same level added to it. It wasn't a blowout either way. Yeah. It was a slugfest going into the twelfth round between two heavyweights, trying to see who's going to score. You know, who's going to yeah. win round twelve, and who's going who's going to be the champ at the end of it. But you know, I I, I do think that Bibbs was there some. Were there little butterflies going into the match? And the only reason I say that um, is because I felt like on some questions you were a little quick on the draw, whereas normally you might think them through a little more. More like the Annie question when uh, talking about Jamie Foxx. I'm still mad about that question. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. Yeah. I did not hear the year. And I should have heard Jamie Foxx. I don't know how I missed that, but I just did not hear the first part of the question. Because um, I knew that. I, I saw that remake. Yeah. It's not, it's not a good movie. You suffered uh, through it with the rest of us. Yeah. yeah. 
but uh, uh, yeah, so that one actually hit me up. I was actually having this, and I wrote a, a post about this on the movie trivia right on Facebook page. Kind of an epically bad day. Yeah. Like, on top of the, the pressure of the match and trying to make sure that that big intro I did was, would go off without a hitch because we had to film it that, that same day. Um, trying to get across town in, in a heat wave and lousy traffic. Uh, I, there was a problem with my bank account. I didn't have any money, so I hadn't eaten that day. I didn't have anything to even, – I didn't even have any liquid that day. Um, so I was not in a great place. And so, yeah, honestly, there, there are a couple of things on there where I'm, I'm still mad at myself. Obviously, uh, uh, the Annie question ticks me off. I simply didn't know the Fiddler on the Roof question, so I'm not too mad about that. Um, but, uh, yeah, the one, that, the one that really gets me is that Annie question because I just flat out knew it. I got too excited. I've done that before. Um, and that's, those are the ones that really bother me because i can't control it if i haven't seen a movie obviously i should have seen the movie it's not an excuse to say i've never seen it therefore it's a bad question that's a, no one should be allowed to say that the only questions that bug me are the ones where i knew the answer and i screwed up in some way either you know your your brain just blanks out and you can't pull it in time or you mishear the question and you didn't realize you misheard the question so you didn't use the jte rule if i had done that i would have gotten it and it would have been an easier game um, so yeah, that one, that one did bug me and I was slapping myself for that for like ever since it happened, like from that minute on. Yeah. And, and, and your entrance though was phenomenal. Oh yeah. Let's but, get you know, to that. Be <laughs> before we talk about the entrance, before we talk about the entrance, cause I know he's been biting his lip the entire time. Chris holler at, holler at me, dog. <laughs> How are you feeling right now? Oh, it's fantastic. Let me actually, because I have all of these layouts. Let me look. Uh, look, this is fantastic. I'm, I was super pumped when I saw Bibbs win. This is something that's been building up for, I would like to say, probably the last almost two years I've been rooting for the guy in the Schmood on uh, Facebook page. And it's just so great to see that this has been finally like proven and, 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 and gotten off my chest. Because look, it's great, Bibbs, that you are the champion. It's fantastic. And guess what? I can bet that you're going to keep that belt to the end of time. Because I, I think <laughs> no yeah, pressure, that's so man. much, that's no, so no much pressure. pressure. No, brother. So time pressure. ends next month. <laughs> awesome. Um, I, I just, I didn't under, uh, I probably, I was so excited that I kind of missed this. But it, it, is it my understanding that whoever wins between Riley versus Guy, uh, I mean, Riley versus uh, Ben and Guy versus Roka, the winner of those two is going to face Bibbs for the championship. Is that what I understood? Like we're in the middle of this kind of like mini okay down to the singles tournament where, yeah, so mm -hmm. either Roka, Bateman, Riley, or Guy, I will have to defend against them at some point in the future. And before anyone makes a big deal of it, that match has not been done yet. Okay. Yeah, I right. was so, wondering if that was going to be about, like, for spectacular. Quickly. Okay. I have no idea that matches yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Okay, yeah, so I, that that's going to be insane. Because either way, all four of those people, that's going to be one of the biggest matches ever. So, you know what? what we have so much to look forward to, and they're just going to get pile drives. It's going to be great. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it's pile drove, but, you know. Pile drove. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have two questions for Splitting you. Hairs here. One, one big, one relatively small. I want to start with the big one. You've been my biggest, most vocal supporter for a long, long time now. And I, I honestly, I, I love you for it. And it's been really, really great getting to know you. And I really appreciate everything you've this. done to support me. But my question is, why? <laughs> what I, I, I don't, what, what is, why? <laughs> why? Why aren't you like, you, you know, what, what, what did, what did I do? What did I, you do? I literally, um, when I saw, uh, this is a fun fact. When I first saw Andrego versus Bibiani, I was like, who is this guy? And I actually got in, in, uh, attached because of Canceled Too Soon. When I got when I started listening to that and the B-Movies podcast on a regular basis when that was a thing, and now it's critically acclaimed and it's fantastic. That's where I was like, you know what? I want Whitney in this show. I want to see them succeed. It was just the underdog. It's the same reasoning with Robert Meyer Brunette, but Robert Meyer Brunette I had an attachment to because he... Uh, directed Free Enterprise, which was a favorite film of my dad. So, like, it's just, you know what? You were the underdog, and uh, it kind of just stuck. It really just stuck, and you know what? I have no regrets. I have no regrets whatsoever. Nope. 
Uh, I, my last follow question uh, uh, to Chris. I saw your reaction video. <laughs> oh yeah. What? What? Why did you take your shirt off? Well, you yeah, know I what? was wondering the same what thing. Reason? <laughs> You I'm know not what? complaining. I just want to know I, why. I have no idea why I did it either. I enjoyed the view, but I'm. I, yeah. I have. I had no idea why I did that. Um, uh, I guess uh, I think it might be flagged on YouTube for all I know. We might have gotten a copyright <laughs> strike. We might have gotten something. But you know what? It was just out of excitement. And you know what? I again have no regrets whatsoever. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, yeah, Bibbs. You thought you were nervous in the match, brother? Was Chris yeah, yeah. Clark walking on eggshells all day yeah, I, long? I specifically didn't want to be spoiled to this match at all, and. I was worth it. It was completely worth and I, it. I, and you know what? People out there, they don't know how much, how many things get spoiled to me by Chris Clark. He spoils so much for me, and I wanted so bad just to get him back. <laughs> I thought this would be the best way, but I didn't want to, I didn't want to trample his happiness. Um, Wait for the team tournament. Just, yeah, we'll do it then. <laughs> Bibbs, Bibbs, I know we have another person scheduled to come on here any minute, but I do want to get to your entrance. Talk to us about that entrance. It was probably in a week of fantastic entrances, by the way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Probably uh, the top of the pyramid. Talk to us about it. Okay, so I had another idea for what I wanted to do for that entrance, and it was a little too similar to something I'd done before, and it would have required a bunch of people, and I couldn't, for some reason, get a lot of people to commit to being there that day. And I was just frustrated and annoyed. And I just started thinking about, God, what can I get coming out of that curtain that would be a surprise? And then it occurred to me, what if we went into the curtain? And then it occurred to me, it's kind of like the doors of Mystery Science Theater 3000. And then I was like, oh, hell, can I do that? <laughs> and, I, and I immediately, I texted, and I texted, I, I sent emails to Christian and Thad and their team, and I was just like, is this the kind of thing we can do? I don't know what logistics would go into it. And I laid out how it would work, um, how you know the set would need to look, and how we'd have uh, Christian or Thad come in and say I was missing the match. And... They said, yeah, I was a little surprised. So I worked on a script with Whitney and uh, we it, actually the hardest part was finding the right movie because we wanted something that was in public domain and we wanted something that got started kind of quick because a lot of the things just have long opening credit sequences and I didn't want to like do that because that would be kind of boring. Um, and the Screaming Skull was kind of the only thing we could find that kind of fit. Um so, yeah, and then there was just there was a little debate about how long it could go. Some people still think the actual sketch bit was too long. I like that it's a little too long because you get a little cozy with it, and you, like then it's like, oh, right, there's actually a match yeah. happening. Mm -hmm. um, and that was that, basically. That was, yeah. that was, that was, that was, that was, that happened. I was, I was actually surprised at how long it was around. I was like, wow, we're still going. I was well, like, here well, we are. Well, see, I had the opposite. I had the opposite <laughs> thing. I got pulled in. I got pulled into the story and to the to the script, yeah. and then while I was watching the movie, and I and then you know when Dad came in, I thought it was like the right time because the movie had gotten enough of my attention, and I was super invested in what was going on here because I didn't know where it was leading to. I thought it was the perfect length. Oh, I'm, I'm glad. I, I I like how it went too, but I'm gonna try to. We'll see. I I need to not. I need to not do crazy long entrances all the time. I can't ruin the flow of the match every ah, match, It's, match. it's match. definitely the longest entrance of all time. <laughs> probably that's true. <laughs> Between that and my clue entrance, those are probably the Oh, yes, yes. That's uh, right. Although, I don't know, the Billy Madison entrance kind of went on for a while, if you ask me. But, uh, oh, yeah. yeah, that's true. Yes. You hold the record in at least one of them. <laughs> if not all categories, you're holding the record at it. But you're but you're the champ. Oh, you have some on your mind. I can see it. Well, no, I just it's just my, my thing is this. You know, you can do a short entrance or a long entrance so long as it keeps people's attention. If it gets boring, why would you do it? So right. the only trick is you got you can't make it forever, obviously, but like you have to make sure your 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 entrance is as long as it is interesting. And if you got nothing, I understand why you walk to the table. I would never do that, but there you go. If you have something, you have to try to find that sweet spot. And All right, well, this time. well, Biz, we appreciate you. Congratulations, champ. You are the man now. You are standing tall on top of the 
Mount Olympus of the movie Trivia Schmodown. We appreciate you, sir. Thank you. All right. That is William the Beast Bibiani, the new singles champion, defeating Mark Andreco in a classic, classic contest. Bibbs, we appreciate it. But now we are joined by, I believe, someone else who we have to congratulate on an incredible victory and a hard-fought victory. Nonetheless, she is joining us right now live uh, here on Collider Podcast. So everybody, please welcome, I, I believe for the first time as me being on the uh, Schmodown Rundown, please welcome Classy Clark Wolf. Hi, can you Hello. guys hear me? We can yes. hear you and yes. we can see you perfectly. Great, uh, excellent. As I was explaining to Bibbs here before we went in wrestling, whenever somebody becomes champ, their name goes away and they were replaced with champ. So now you're referred to as champ here f- throughout your entire reign. So congrats, <laughs> congrats champ. And how does it feel? Oh, it feels so good. And thank you. And uh, it's it's awesome. It's very, very exciting. We were are so proud of of the game that we played, um, you know, in the match today. And uh, I think that's ultimately the most important thing to us is did we play a good game? And I think that, you know, because it, it's a it feels like a little bit of a of a thing that the Internet likes to do, uh, finding ways to tell us why we didn't really win. Uh, <laughs> And yeah, so, yeah. so I feel really very strongly that we played a hell of a game. And um, so, yeah, it feels really, really good. It was the uh, the best played title match of all time. So um, numbers, <laughs> oh. numbers wise, numbers wise. <laughs> so there you go. Thank you. There's, good. There's stats. Well, well you're a, you made history here today. Let's I guess let's address that first because history was made. Uh, fi- you were pegged just like Bibiani. You were pegged and Rachel have both been pegged since you entered the league. These are going to be champions in the league. They are going to be champions. You've had opportunities at singles championships before, but when you joined forces and became a mega powers, if you will, uh, you finally got the job done as a team. I think everyone saw it coming. It was a more matter of not if, but when. How does it feel to to finally make history? The first two women to hold championship gold in the Schmodown. I mean, that's definitely something to be proud of. Yeah, it is. It's very exciting. Although I will say that that narrative is something I am familiar with, as when I joined forces with Mark Riley, I was also told that it was just a matter of time right. before I had a belt. And, you know, the ma- the fact of the matter is that I loved playing with Riley and I love playing with Rachel. But And Rachel and I talked about this early when we started playing together. The whole hype situation is something that we are both aware of, but also not taking for granted. So I think that it's a bit of a double-edged sword when you sort of enter in and people go, oh, yeah, well, I'll have a belt soon, you know, and and it's it's like it's it's almost extra crushing when you get really close and you're you start to hear that narrative over and over again. So um, so I am I'm super, super proud of the of the season that I personally that I've had this season. I'm very proud of my uh my title match with Sam Levine, um, which went into four rounds of overtime and was a, fo- a one point game. I mean, I think, you know, I think that sort of speaks for itself. And then as far as this goes, you know, Rachel and I really balance each other out in a lot of ways and we're learning how to be better players for each other, um, which I think is, is really help- helpful with our team dynamic. And by the way, even though Rachel and I are the two that are there playing, Emma Fife is like an incredible manager. And Mark Andreco is an incredible um, faction teammate. And, you know, the videos that we post on social media of us actually sitting around and practicing and playing and getting the buzzers and like drilling each other with questions, that's all very real. So we we take it real. Rachel and I take it very seriously. And, and she and I are very lucky to be to be surrounded by Mark and Emma. Now, when you're getting ready to go into this match, though, and, and you're preparing for this championship match, you do not know who you're going against. You, you know Brianne. We know Brianne. You know Brian from the Adam Carolla show. That was a, a big surprise to many people. There were a lot of speculation on who it might be. I don't think Bald Brian was on anybody's list, which is a good thing. <laughs> um, when when did, did you find out? Because I don't know. Christian likes to keep stuff real close to the vest, and so does Brianne. Uh, d- did you find out? When did you find out? Did you find out as he came through the curtain, or did you see him in the studio and be like, oh, okay, I see something up here? 
I think the day of is a good, you know, I mean, because we're yeah. we're obviously still there. We're there physically right. so we can see each other. But, you know, at the end of the day, like Brian's credentials, uh, you know, are are intimidating, um, uh, if nothing else. And um, and but, you know, we did know going in that if it wasn't going to be somebody that Brienne had known or played with before, that might have been a risk for her. Because the thing that Rachel and I especially always talk about is that, you know, the game is very specific to the schmodown. You can know every little thing at all times. You know, you can know you can be a trivia whiz, but when you get under the lights, when you get in front of the buzzers, when you're on your own with the whiteboards, it, it's actually it's it's a very there is strategy involved. And so Brian is certainly intimidating. Um, and it was a surprise towards up until the end, for sure. I mean, both of them really uh, re- really kept their secret. Yeah, but it, go ahead, go ahead, Bibbs. Clark, uh, uh, as someone who just, you know, you guys killed it in the speed round, uh, what what is the trick? <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the trick is listening. That's the trick. I mean, really, like, I think uh, keeping your heart rate down and listening to the question. And, you know, it's, it's to me, when I play the speed round, now that I've gotten the hang of it, uh, I think that, yeah, it's just a matter of sort of filling in the blanks and getting in the rhythm. But listening to the question is really important. Uh, and listening to the structure of the question, I think, is really important. Uh, uh, talking, uh, talking about the speed round, uh, you guys didn't seem to know the math at that point, how it was all unfolding. Yeah, and now your your reaction and Rachel's are some of the best reactions I think we've seen to a championship winning. The, I think it's some of the best reactions in the history of the game. Oh like yeah, bar none. Yeah, tell us tell us about what was like <laughs> when all that started wrapping up. So I had been paying attention to the board and definitely realized that we were eleven up at the last question, but I guess. In that moment, you go, okay, these numbers add up. Wait a sec. But nobody was saying anything. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, so I was like, when Ken and Mark like hadn't jumped in yet, because I think they were double checking. You don't want to like, right. you know, like it, it's such a fast round, no matter where you're sitting, if you're at the table uh playing or if you're at the table calling. And so um, so I had done the math, Emma Fife had done the math in the audience <laughs> and we were all sort of just waiting for somebody to say something because, and so, but Rachel had no idea. Rachel no, had did. not done the math. And oh, you I can had, tell. And so, yeah, you can tell. And that's why like, I'm sitting there looking like, okay, I think I know, don't react like what's going on. Um, so yeah, we, it, but, but there was a delay in the studio to them saying and your winners and and so so I think we were all just like frozen in time for a minute. <laughs> it was incredible, you know. But when I when so okay when they started going into that round number two, um, after great round one, it was still close enough in round after round one. You go into round number two and you see one of the categories is dance. Dance is on there. Uh, did your heart drop when you saw that? Uh, just a little bit. <laughs> There were like, t- wasn't it musicals and dance? I think so. There? I think so. Yeah. yeah. And they were both yeah. those Patreon questions. <laughs> yeah. And uh, <laughs> the the gentleman who put them on actually tweeted at us today and said, "No collusion. I didn't do it." <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, which is very funny. But uh, yeah, I mean, of course. And when she spun it, I was just like. Oh my God. Whoa. Yeah. This is. But then when she spun away from it, I was also like, oh my God. Whoa. What? <laughs> and and I understand again, strategy is so much a part of this game. And I totally 100 percent understand why she did what she did. Um, because you want to have something that both you and your partner feel good in. Um, uh, or you shoulder the blame if you mess it up. Which, which is, I know that it sounds like I'm being like false or maybe phony when I say this, but every, if I get horror or if I get a category that I feel like, okay, I know this, I'll be good. 
there is always that question of, wait a second, this could totally backfire. And let's say hypothetically, if I don't know it, Rachel probably, it, this is not one of her strengths. So it's so, so you have to be super confident. And again, that strategy. So, um, so yeah, it, uh, when I saw dance and musicals, I was just like, oh God, this is, <laughs> this is scary for sure. Can I, make a, yeah. can I make a point about strategy there too? Uh, this is also a situation where you and Rachel are so good at everything that it may have been a situation where she wanted to leave it available for something you guys might get. Sure. I mean, and that, that is absolutely. I spun away from nineties because there weren't a lot of slices on that wheel that Mark might not have been good at. No, that, I got musicals and what didn't work out for me, but that might have been the situation with Brand. Yeah, you always I do take that into consideration 100 percent Like you you want to don't you don't want to blow out a category that potentially you could steal from. But um I always point to this, but I believe it was JTE spinning horror in my match, my singles match against him a while ago. And I thought, okay, here we go. Here's a chance for me yeah. to like steal. And I, he got more points. In, he got a lot of points in that round. He got more points in his round two with horror than I got in my round two. And so, so it, again, like, I know it's really easy in the audience to sit there and go, Oh, again, this, you know, like her easy category, but it, it really, it's not that simple. So. But you did get horror twice, yes, right? I mean, right. in two rounds. So. <laughs> that was crazy. Okay, but did Emma, I don't know. Cause I guess this didn't make the, this wasn't in the actual episode, but the Friday the 13th question. So Emma Fife, my lovely, I should start calling her my momager at this point because she is basically like my mom at this point, um, but stage mom. But um, she she knew, and you can't see it because there's no, I don't know if the camera was on me, but Friday the 13th is not my thing. I do not like slasher movies. Uh, I, I like the, I'll, I've seen the first ones fine. I am not a friend. This girl and Friday the 13th is my least favorite of all of the slasher franchises. So when that, when the question started with in the Friday the 13th series, I was like, oh fuck, like this is, <laughs> this is going to make me look so like, this is going to be yeah. really, really bad. Um, but it didn't work out that way. So, but yeah, Emma, Emma was in the crowd like, oh no, oh no, she hates this. She hates this. This is not good. Um, but fortunately, that one was one I knew. We should have a manager camp. A like, manager camp. And then the whole should. time. Just like, oh God. Yes, yeah, that's actually a great idea. I, I think that's an awesome idea is manager cam. Yeah. Well, I will pick you know what the... you. Yeah, pr yeah, you should pitch that one, Bibbs. But you know, when you bring up Emma Fife, though, you bring up a manager in general. I guess I've never really just thought about the role that they really play. Uh, you know, in in terms of coaching your team to victory or being there for you. What is Emma role? What what does Emma Fife do for you all? Well, so Emma Emma sees and pays attention to all of her players. So she knows strengths and weaknesses. She watches. Uh, I mean, we all watch the matches, but she is really in it. And so she is really good at noticing, okay, this is how this person plays. This is a strength of this person and so on and so forth. And she's also really good at giving you know, me insight about Rachel that maybe I didn't know or giving Rachel insight about me that maybe Rachel didn't know and, and watching us together and going, okay, here's what you two tend to do. Here's what I would suggest. Here's how you should approach, you know, the way if you're going to play this person or that person, here's how they play, et cetera, et cetera. So Emma actually, when it comes to strategy and when it comes to, um, you know, helping us get, have all of the tools in our tool belt, um, that, that is something that she adds as a manager that I don't really know if other managers do, but I think that's why she's such a good manager. It's so funny because like the audience is so tough when they call us the choke club. It's like, oh, and Draco respectfully bibs, you guys played an amazing game, but like, and Draco lost by a point. 
Mm-hmm. Right. I, I mean, you know what I mean? I took Sam to four rounds of overtime and lost by a point. Emma played, or I'm sorry, uh, Rachel in her inner geekdom match was like, what, 12 rounds or something like that yeah. of overtime? So, like, the idea that we choke or the idea that we're not a great team, like, I, I just don't, I don't buy that, you know, when you're talking about coin flips. So the point is that I think that Emma is a, re- she's she's getting her players, she's getting her players to the finish line and oftentimes over the finish line just just in sudden death over and over and over again. How do you, though? How, oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Biff. I want to say this about the idea of choking because it's something that's <laughs> come up a lot with me as well, that I choke a lot right. in the final round. Um, I'm not sure choking really is a word that applies in the movie Trivia Schmodown most of the time. You either know the question or you don't. Occasionally I've rushed an answer, but that's not choking. Choking is, in my estimation when you lose your nerve or something or or you just can't handle the pressure it just boils down to you know clark and rachel and mark they're all crazy intelligent wonderful smart people and there was a time when they lost by a point i've lost by a point i assumed mark had beaten me after the speed round you know he's just that good so i don't really think it's choking i think it's just that's how the game works. It is a game. Someone does have to win. How how do you though, Clark? Though deal with the criticism. I feel like y'all y'all are like for some reason a target to some of the, to a, a minority segment of the community, uh, a vocal minority, but a minority nonetheless. Well, how do you how do you deal with that? Honestly, I mean that, it can't be fun to after like a big moment to refresh your timeline, you know, and, yeah. and see not so flattering things. I don't look at it. Um, I'm, I'm fortunate that, um, in my, when it comes to, so I don't have the notifications on Facebook because the Facebook group is out of control. Uh, and, yes. uh, they, they, t- they, like to tag, they like to tag you to tell you how much you suck or something, which is very cool. <laughs> and, um, and in terms of YouTube, like I will say, I looked at the comments today and it was about 50, 50, half of the, I think half the comments were saying, great. We're so happy for them. The other half were saying, well, until above the line, they didn't play above the line and so it doesn't count and it's like okay well they're above the line isn't until team anymore so yeah you know what i'm saying it's like i have been thinking about this i have been thinking about you're tasked with playing who you're tasked with playing and at the end of the day the four teams that we were tasked with playing to to earn our victories are the four that we were given and um you know i think that I am not going to, you know, I'm just going to say it. I do think it's true. I think the fact that we're girls who try and girls who care and girls who study and girls who love the game uh, bothers yeah. people. I really do. I think I think they look at us and they see the girl that asks for homework or something and it annoys them. But, um, you know, the truth of the matter is like Rachel and I are, are dyed in the wool nerds and have been doing this literally our whole life. The difference is there that now there's a camera on a camera on us. Like we've been we've been dressing up in costumes and watching movies and having debates and trivia contests with our friends forever. So I, I do think that whether they know it or not, bothers them, we're girls and we're good. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, it's for the other girls who are good that I think we play and the, and the men who love us. That's Absolutely. right. Talk your talk, Chris <laughs> Clark. I love mean, uh, Clark Wolf. I love it. Uh, Frank, you've been unusually quiet. What do you got? Well, no, the only thing I also wanted to bring up, and it kind of ties in what you just said, Clark, was you know your, pro, your post-match interview and, and what you said during that, um, not only with you've wanted this for a long time, but you are, in fact, the first women to hold titles and that we don't need a women's league. Uh, you guys, you said, are the league. And really this year, the Five Club has been the league for a vast majority of the season so far. Um, what was it? You know, you got a little bit emotional in that in that interview. Did you expect to, to feel that way in that moment? Um, yes. I did actually. I I did. I um because it because it does matter to me. It's it's funny because you know like um when Roka gets emotional, when Roka really tries, when he really wants it, it's like, "Oh man, good job. You yeah. did it." 
And when we do it, it's it's not good enough. It doesn't really count. But but to to some people, um, to others, they they recognize that that it's sincere and that we are passionate and we are competitors and we do care. And um, but yeah, it it was a I did expect to get emotional. I really wanted us to win. I really wanted us to win because we, as singles players and as teams, whether it was with our former partners or with each other, we've played a lot and we've we've learned yeah. a lot. And this is the thing that I think is really interesting about the match that we played is that to, uh, for the uh, in the title match was that. It's not a flashy match in that it doesn't go down to the last question. It it it's not like I mean it it's a technically really good match. And the technical skill that I think we both showed um that I am proud of because not only do I think our trivia game is strong, I think our schmodown game is strong. Um that that's that's fun to only ha- a portion of the people but i think if you really watch the game and you really appreciate like what goes into the actual game then that was a match that was exciting for you but if you are in it for the back and forth and the down to the last question drama then maybe that wasn't your ideal match but for me as somebody who respects the game i was super proud of that match you know, for yeah. a ahead, for Frank. a for a knockout, it was actually pretty exciting because it was will, will they or will they not get it? And you know, both of you, both the teams went back and forth, traded questions back and forth, back and forth, and they almost got out of that round. But you obviously put the nail in the coffin there at the end. Um, so in that regard, I felt I felt like for a knockout, which generally can be a blowout or you see it coming, this one was pretty exciting, yeah. all things considered, as a knockout. Uh, so I thought that was really great and. Uh, I think what's interesting is when you see people in the community who talk about the Shirewolves, all they can talk about is people who they've played, not how you have played. And you have demonstrated that you are definitely, I know it's only been four matches, but one of the top three teams ever to play this game with above the line in the Patriots. And uh, I just, I think it's a curious notion that that's the only thing people point towards is who you've played, not how you have played, and it's been absolutely dominant. And you point to this match. You're right; it's technically one of the best matches ever, um, title match for sure. And all they can say is, "Well, they didn't play above the line, not how you played." So that's you know unfortunate. Yeah, yeah and we we kind of touched on that too with with Bibbs about you know the. The whole thing about, you know, Bibbs didn't beat Sam Levine. Oh, well, he's not a legitimate champion. Uh, y'all didn't beat above the line. Well, they're not legitimate. I mean, I, we already kind of shot that down. But how do you feel about just that statement? Well, and I mean, I would say that I did beat Sam Levine. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I love I love Sam. I love him, but I did oh, beat man. him. It's we're yeah. actually tied. So we need a rematch. Sure. I know he's. I know he's uh, retired now, but uh, like an old man. But uh, but uh, but no, I mean, I, that's what I say. I did beat him. So, and you know what? When I played uh, above the line with Mark Riley, oh. that was that match for for us not winning. Like we scored. I'm so proud of that match. Like we scored a million. Points. It was uh, 32 to 35. I think it was yeah. one of the best matches of all time in the teams. It was crazy. So, so I don't, you know, the, the people, again, the people who say that they only appreciate the, the short term, I believe they don't appreciate what actually goes into these matches because if they actually cared about the details, then, then they would see that, that we're quite accomplished. Well, you know what, uh, to accomplish this goal though, you needed a, a partner, you needed a partner that you could trust and a partner you have, and a partner is now joining us with you. Uh, the other half of the new team champions, Miss Rachel Cushing. Cushing. Rachel, congrats, champ! Woo! Thank you very much. I like that title. <laughs> yes, I'm sure that I'm sure that you do. Now uh, we were talking about the post match interview, and I and I want to continue on the trend because I'm not going to say who said it. I don't. I don't names out there, but somebody said that this post-match interview, and I'm going to give you a hint on the name. It sounds a little bit like Christian Harloff. Uh, this po- they said this post-match interview is the most important interview in Schmodown history. How do you, how do you feel about hearing that, Rachel? Um, yeah, I, I mean, I agree with it because it was, it was very raw. <laughs> um, it was very emotional. It was very in the moment, and we were just so excited and over the moon and still kind of in shock. At least I certainly was. You can 
tell. Um, and, <laughs> yeah. and like, so th- th- there was no like, you know, sometimes in, in promos and interviews, I'll, I'll think ahead of time of the things I want to say. There was none of that there. There was just us, you know, reacting to doing the thing that we set out eight months ago to do. And, um, and so it's a very honest post-match interview. Uh, most important of all time, I don't know, but certainly the most important, I think, to us. Oh, and, you know, uh, Cl- uh, Clark told us that, you know, she was keeping count. She knew where y'all were in that <laughs> speed round. It was obvious you were unaware uh, because you were in the game, obviously. But, I mean, the reaction, like we said, I mean, it's, w- literally your jaw was hitting the floor. Uh, <laughs> how do, So were you just so – you were just so deep in. You were in too deep at the time to just not even be aware of where the score was at. Yeah, I mean, like, after each round, Clark and I were very cognizant of the score and, and talk, talking about it and using that – in terms of our strategy and what to do in each round. And we communicated really well. Um, However, we just came out of the buzzer round, which to no one's surprise is my least favorite round. Um, (laughs) (laughs) And, you know, and so for me, I was not looking at the score during that buzzer round. I was just crossing my fingers and praying that like I would get one (laughs) and that I would do well in it. So yeah. So in that moment, I wasn't looking at the scoreboard. I was literally, I, I was standing, um, my costume was not the most comfortable guys. And, um, <laughs> it looks and <laughs> <laughs> thank you. And, and I just had my, my hand on the buzzer and, and all I was thinking about was like, listen to the question word for word and buzz as fast as you can. And, uh, and she got the last one. I was just like, that's awesome. Like, I think we got a few of those and I looked up and then Ken started saying, and your winner. And, and that was genuine. Like I, I, <laughs> I, I, I never in a million years thought we would we were playing a great game, but I didn't think we would win um, with the, the TKO. So I think also, like, just to piggyback on that, we were ready to keep going. Like, yeah, we, right. we had it in our mindset one round at a time, like Rachel said, but also, like, okay, if we need to keep – we're ready. Okay, let's get into round five. Now, <laughs> we've got – how many points do we need? What do we have? What do we have at our disposal? Like, what numbers are we going to pick? It's always – so that's how I was thinking. I mean, I was keeping – on the numbers, but yeah, I think, I think I was also ready to like, keep going. But Rachel, talk about how much trust you had to have in Clark, uh, when it got to round two and, and horror was spun and, uh, obviously not something that you're, you're, you know, you love as a category, um, but that Clark obviously excels at how much, you know, trust did you have to have in her at that moment? I, I, it's a mutual trust with us. We've discussed this whole idea of, um, uh, categories that uh, people are, are considered really good in. We've talked about it many times and Clark's made it very known. And, and it's, you know, there's examples to back it up that just because we consider ourselves, you know, really good in a category does not mean that we won't get asked a question that could stump us. Like it, it does happen. And, right. you know, and she has some strengths that I'm not as strong in and, and vice versa. And so we go into it knowing that we could come up against that. Um, but my philosophy is always that's still the better bet because there's other things likely on the wheel that you would want less, you know. And and so I was 100% like Dance. last time. And it, yeah, I mean, yeah, really. I've, <laughs> let me, I will tell you, I've been studying because I knew that was going to be on the wheel. Hate <laughs> or not. Um, but, um, but yeah, no, it, it's playing in the teams league doesn't work if you don't have trust. And it doesn't work if you don't have communication. And those are the two things that I think Clark and I have built up really strongly over um, the last eight months in playing together. And I knew that if, if, if I spun a strength, that she would be behind me and, and would back me up and, and vice versa. And that's exactly what happened. And, um, and, and, and I've been studying a little bit in the horror movies, too. So I if will say I- I- I if, I, if I may, she she got the Evil Dead Tennessee question because I that wanted was... to say Michigan, and she was like, "Pretty sure it's Tennessee." And <laughs> and you can see in the in the conver- in the tape where I say, "Yep, okay, if you think that's it, go for it." Yes, and she said Tennessee, and she got it. You know what if I mean? You were, so, yeah, if you were Ben right. Bateman, and you would have overridden her. <laughs> So, oh yeah! Oh, yeah, low blow, Frank. Low well, that's blow. true. That's what happens. Okay. Unnecessary I roughness. That, like an important distinction, respectfully. Like the fact yeah. that I, you know, we listen to each other, and if it's like, no, I got this, or I'm confident, it's like, okay, yes, go for it. And and you know what? That way, even if it is in a split second, we mutually make the decision, and we go, okay, 
if we get it right, we get it right. If we get it wrong, we get it wrong. But we both agree. Go for it. We sleep well at night. Next question. You know, uh, I want to I want to ask talk, that. Go ahead, Frank. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, you both have been in the league for quite some time. Clark, a little longer. Does it surpri- has it surprised you what it actually takes to be uh, successful in this league? Did you ever think I got to do I'm, I can't believe I'm actually doing this thing for a movie trivia contest. Does, does, has anything ever just been like, I can't believe I'm actually doing this to play better in a match. Yeah, Rachel, I don't buy the step up box set. You know, <laughs> right? <laughs> you bought a step up box set? <laughs> uh, let me, I'll, I watched a couple of them, Bibs. <laughs> yeah, but talk about the dedication and sacrifice, though, to you know, go off Frank was, what was Frank was talking about. I think that there is, um, I mean, I think we, we've all, that if everybody recognizes their weak spot, and then it's up to each of us to decide, like, how willing we are to use what spare time we have in our lives to maybe, like, bolster those. And, you know, and we've each, you know, done that kind of soul searching. And, and I've definitely watched movies that I wouldn't normally have gone out to watch because I thought, you know, this is probably a good for the Schmoda. I love movies though. So like, it's not like it's terrible homework. And I do draw the line at certain movies where I'm just like, you know, those Jean-Claude Van Damme movies, <laughs> I'm good. If I get asked about it and I don't get it right, then, you know, I'm, I'll, <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll live <laughs> with it. Um, but, uh, but I think that the, the, the difference has been in the way I watch movies. A lot of times I watch them with in the back of my head going, that make a good question. That would do. Oh, make sure you know who the director is. Make sure you know who the yeah. writer is. What's the release date on this one? So like, uh, you know, that's certainly been a part of it. Um, and uh, so, yeah, so there is a fair amount of studying for lack of a better word. Everybody's got their own versions of it. The Fife Club, which has been, you know, just such a, a, a light in my life the last eight months. We get together, we hang out and, and we, we quiz each other you know, to, to stay in that mindset of, of movie trivia and things like that. So yeah, it's definitely become a significant part of my life. That's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> I love, love you, Bibbs. Uh, before we get to the stats part of, of it, and I, and I have a couple other questions. I want to talk about the entrance. We had a week of great entrances uh, from the championship match to Bibbs match to your opponent had a fantastic entrance with the Miss Congeniality. Talk to me about one y'all's entrance on this match, the the Thor entrance, and just how y'all go about putting them together all together. I guess Clark, I'll go to you first, and then Rachel. Well, I have, oh, Rachel, I have, go ahead. Let, let me preface this because yes. this is what happened. We were talking about an entrance, a lower key one, um, like uh, a week and a half to two weeks before the uh, the match shot, and so we're like, well, we're not going to go too big. We're, we're going to go to going to you know knuckle down. This is about the trivia. It's about the contest. Why not? And then we went, we were both at Collider for the, like a few days later, or a week later for um, a taping. And Clark goes to me, screw it. We're going big. And she's like, <laughs> she's wanted to play Lady Thor for a while. She's like, we're, we're just, we're just going to do this. So like, this was a decision made with a week to go before we shot the match. Uh, but it was absolutely the right decision. Yeah. We talked about, I had, when we were coming up with ideas for our live entrance, um, mm-hmm. You know, I had said that I had wanted to dress up like Thor because <laughs> um, <laughs> it's just something that I had wanted to do because Thor is awesome. And uh, the Immigrant Song, like, oh. it's just like that song live would have been so awesome. Oh. Like, it just really. But we were like, no, hold on. Fife Club, like, we got to do Fight Club. Like, now's the time to do Fight Club. And we can, like, we have there's whatever. So, yes, that Rachel is correct, though. We were going to do, like. You know, she was like, oh, wait, do you want to do this? Do you want to do that? And I was like, I don't really care. I don't really want to do it. Like, no, I don't. Let's just do something small. I don't have time. I can't think about it. <laughs> and then we had, we had heard rumors about what Brienne's entrance was going to be. And I was ah. like, and she was like, okay, fuck no. We're doing Thor. We're doing Thor. <laughs> and, well, and it was like, a, you know, checking with everybody and being like, okay, do you want to do it? And, and Rachel had her Hela costume. True. In the wings. And uh, my costume was a <laughs> very last minute find. Uh, fun fact, <laughs> not a lot of Thor Ragnarok costumes available on the internet. And uh, <laughs> it was a man's extra large that we pinned to. I mean, it, that thing is so safety pin. I It actually was 
Okay, I want to give you guys a little bit of a <laughs> mental picture. You know Arrested Development, George Michael Blue's muscle suit that yeah. is a foam muscle suit? That's how that costume came. It came with foam arms and legs. I am not kidding. That's I had amazing. to cut the foam arms off because it looked insane. <laughs> it was like... <laughs> it was insane. And so it was just kind of like, okay, well, we're going to make the best of this. I don't know if it's going to work. So we pinned it to hell. And then Rachel had her hair and makeup done. She looked amazing. And then yeah. Emma, Emma with the, Emma's she was amazing. like, I got birds. She like, <laughs> birds. She's like I have these ravens. Cool. I gave her an eye patch because I do have a collection of eye patches. She put glit. We, we were like, let's make it glittery. It was like, <laughs> <laughs> it's really good. good but yeah that was the last yeah. bit yeah <laughs> i don't want to bury the collection of eye patches lead by the way that's a bachelorette parties don't it's it's a whole thing i got oh, a lot okay. of we won't go down the <laughs> we won't go down that road uh frank talk to me about the stats uh in this match yeah it was uh i think the sixth best accurate match of all time but for a title match, is the number one most accurate match. They almost hit 90%. They were at uh, 89%, I believe. Yeah, I would 89%. say that's almost 90. Yeah, 80, well, it's 889 exact. And uh, sick in the head, they were 16 of 25 for 64%. So even though they're a rookie team, I thought they still played really well for a rookie team, given the circumstances and Brian being a rookie uh, to the Schmodown. So, um Again, once again, Shire Wolves, Rachel, and Clark. Clark, you snapped your streak of answering seven in a row. It was it would have been your seventh uh, match in a row. You ended at six. Uh, that's one better than Drew McWeeny, who's answered seven or more for five straight matches, team matches. That is so uh, a bit well, of unfortunate. He'll catch up one day. He'll, yeah. he'll catch up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, hopefully, hopefully. And, I'm kidding. Uh, He's a machine. It's, yeah. It's um, but he also proved, once again, that Shire Wolves are one of the best teams uh, when it comes to the first round specifically. You guys haven't answered less than 12 points in any of your matches, which is not something a lot of teams can say, even uh, the Patriots, who are considered or one of the greatest teams of all time. So, um, again, like I said before, it's how you play, not exactly who you play. But uh, you guys are one of the best teams of all time already, in my estimation. And I think a lot of other people's as well. They just got to voice those opinions a little louder. <laughs> and uh, we'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to me, Rachel, though, because we got Clark's uh, uh, analysis of it. But when you saw Bald Brian, how did you feel then? <laughs> um, I, I, I sort of hinted at it in my post-match. Um, I was more nervous. I was the more nervous one. I was like... France, she's she could pick anybody. She's gonna pick this like this unknown phenom. And then I heard rumors that he like played on Beat the Geeks, and I'm like, oh my god, like yeah. this guy's gonna come in in wreck house. Like I was expecting another Ethan Irwin or something. So I was was very nervous um, coming in. Um, what probably helped was that um, he didn't get the first question, if I remember correctly. It was Fast and yes, Furious yeah. question. Yeah. Um, and I was like, oh, okay, all right, he's human. <laughs> <laughs> like, You're the only that, one to get the first that, question. That, right? that helped yeah. a little bit. Oh, that was that was a little bit lucky. I, I I know them those movies okay, some of them better than others. Um, and I knew the answer was either five or six, so I I got a little lucky on that one. Um, but uh, but it, it's funny when after the fact, I I think he's a great addition. I mean, he he is he is a very strong player. I mean, to play that well in your first match out, I think is is very impressive. Um, he also was kind of like he was funny and he had, you know, like he had fun asides and he had character and personality. And again, coming from somebody who like whispered into her microphone the first match she ever played and like barely said a word, I just I find that impressive. So um, I, I was glad to find out he was human because I had put him up on a very high pedestal and, and it had me nervous that I didn't know who this person we were playing was what's his strengths what's his weaknesses like i didn't know what they were gonna have on the wheel like it, you, the unknown can be kind of scary in this showdown can i can i tell you something now cool? y'all oh, made I, history to, go ahead bibs I, I i was talking to him like before the match and we had actually like done like a little bit of training with him just so he wouldn't go in completely blind and be completely destroyed uh <laughs> by you guys so that he was familiar with the game 
And when I was giving him some questions, he was like purposefully answering them wrong because I might be a future competitor. And he didn't want me to know his strengths. Okay. Like he was really taking it seriously. Oh, wow. Because he's not here. I want to give him that credit. He was really taking it seriously. I think it's really cool. Yeah. But y'all, y'all made history, obviously today. You know, together winning the championships. But what, what is y'all's? Old, I'll go to Clark first. What is y'all's ultimate goal with this run with the championships? Do y'all want to break the streak of the Patriots? Do you want to? I mean, what do you want to do? I want to keep the belt. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, start. that's that's as far as I've gotten. <laughs> it's still fresh, but yeah. I do think I, I think that. Now, now we're, we're up on a different tier, you know, like we, we, we've had expectations are they are what they are. Um, but Rachel and I have proven to ourselves that we, we're, we're good at this game. Uh, and, and I know, like I said earlier, and Rachel and I have talked about this one-on-one, we're very proud of our performance in this game. And so I think we've proven to ourselves that we are viable players. I think we have won we we have won the titles and so now i think the next level is keeping them and 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 seeing and seeing how we fare against different teams and and as the champions current champions for me at least and, that's how i feel and, and rachel uh, same question but also what teams what teams <laughs> are you looking forward to the most yeah it's hard not to say you know that we're not excited about taking on some of the other previous winners and, and the, the veterans of the game. Like Clark said, there's, you know, uh, I guess there's tiers of players or there's at least the illusion of tiers of kinds of players and teams. And, you know, we beat some new teams, but we beat some veteran players too and, and on our way to these belts. But it's, it's sort of like an exciting new, you know, frontier now of looking at this lineup and anarchy you know, which is all jumbled up. Like, it's not like we can say, oh, we're, we're looking forward to take on top 10, you know, or something like right, that. Like, right. who knows? Um, there's a lot of scary pairings in there. But like Clark said, what our match proved to us and also to all those players is that we are, what, an 89% accurate team? Like, yeah. the, the <laughs> best of the best players are going to have a hard time taking us down. And we intend to prove that again and in as many times as we possibly can um but yeah we we proved to ourselves which was the most important thing um and and the numbers are the numbers so that should be proof enough for everybody else but you know we have to defend it at spectacular against whoever comes out of this crazy tournament but um make no mistake we'll be ready for them and they know we're coming nobody's gonna be um you know underestimating us at least amongst the competitors right bibs we are fucking terrified of you. <laughs> I'm terrified of you individually, and I am terrified of you together as a team. Uh, so yeah, I speak for all the competitors. We're all really scared. It's one of the things that's like everyone who plays the game has looked at like some of the criticism y'all have dealt with, and we're just like, we don't get it. They're terrifying. They are like the smartest players in the team in the league. They work together better than any other team. They're gods. So yeah, we're all <laughs> this tournament. Clark and dressed all- up as a god. <laughs> yeah, I mean, as guardians, basically. <laughs> all of these people, like, and th- this tournament's going to be really, really weird because a lot of the people who are playing together know each other, but they haven't played together before. So you might have people who are like really, really good teamed up together, but are they going to work together as well as the Shire Wolves? Who knows? Like, you could have this huge advantage over any team you end up playing just because you have the experience together and no one else does. So it's going to be really, really frightening to see like how this whole team tournament goes. Yeah. Chemistry is key with everything, right? Cause you look at a team like above the line with Sam and drew, nobody knew how they were going to do together and they clicked. So people can click out of the gate. Um, Other people need a little bit more time and other people, especially in this anarchy tourney uh, are, are just going to be, you know, oil and water, I think. So, um, but I think that's going to be the fun of the tournament for sure. Um, but yeah, I think that when Clark and I agreed to be partners, we knew that we didn't know each other very well outside of the Schmodown when we first paired up. So we 
took the time and we spent the time together to get to know each other and to talk strategy and to talk strengths and weaknesses. And, and we were very open and honest with each other. And our number one rule is we talk, we communicate for every, every round, every point that we get to, even if one of us is a hundred percent sure they know the answer, we lean over to the other one and say, this is the answer before we say it out loud into the microphone, you know, stuff like that. And, um, you know, I think that's the, the, the bones of making a really good partnership. I mean, we have a teammate, like use your teammate. Yeah. I, I, it's a, it's kind of common sense. <laughs> yeah. 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 But people don't do it, you know, cause you get wrapped up. That's all. It's, it's just different styles. Now y'all are team champions, of course. Or is there still a desire though? And, and Bibbs is here. Uh, we, we're going to know who the inner geekdom champion is very soon. There's a star Wars champion that's new out there. Uh, are there still desires to have singles gold as well? I mean, for me, I want to keep playing in the singles league. I, cause I'm having fun and, uh, because I want to get out there. I want to play. I want to be visible. Um, I'm, I think I'm ready. It's back and forth. It's an emotional, like, it's an emotional thing playing this, doing this, testing your brain, testing your skill in front of the hundreds of thousands of people. It's like, it's a little daunting. And so sometimes the reactions can be exhausting and can be, you know, frustrating, but, um, now I've gotten to a place where I'm having fun with it and, uh, and I want to be out there and I want to be visible and I want to keep playing in singles. So I, that's going to be a yes for me. Rachel. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I've been very open and vocal about, um, it being difficult for me to play in three leagues at once. Um, but the nice thing about, you know, having won the belts is that Clark and I can can sit back and 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 relax and watch everybody else play and play along and, and, and you know, certainly stay in shape and be ready for whoever we play at Spectacular. But it does open the door to play in the other leagues. Um, now, clearly, I, I had my shot at Intergeekdom and, and, you know, had some bumps in the road there, but I'm certainly not giving up on that league. And, and I haven't played in singles since, you know, I lost to, to Sam and that was quite a while ago. So I, you know, have had time to sort of lick my wounds on that front and hopefully get back in the, in the ring there too. So as long as I keep a balance between playing in the various leagues, then I will continue playing. Frank. Uh, guys, it was great to have you here. Um, you guys are the new champs. I'm thrilled that you are the champs. You guys are great uh, representatives of the Schmodown. It's been a pleasure talking to both of you after this, uh, I mean, historic win, really. And uh, just thank you very much for having the time to come on here. And Frank, are you going to live up to your end of the bargain, though? I don't know if you all know this, and I don't want to put Frank on the spot. I don't know if bet, I know this. Frank, you don't, you don't remember the, the bet was if Shire Wolves win, you get the Shire Wolf logo tattooed on your pectoral. <laughs> <laughs> this was the bet. Oh, this right. was really? the bet. I, you know what? I, this I was did get it. It's invisible ink, but you can uh, always, yeah. Black light. Yeah. Black light. Like black little, light. Yeah, black yeah. light. And I'm all out of black damn light. It. So. Damn it. Damn you, Janice. Yeah. Damn you, Janice. Yeah. Well, we I just. Can I just say thank you guys for for having us on because I know that the fans and the audience really respects you guys. They respect your show. I know the players respect you and respect your show, and um and so it means a lot for us to for you guys to have us here and to celebrate us and to really you know talk to us and ask us questions and treat us like the real deal. It's awesome. I mean, we and I really appreciate it. So thank you. Oh, no, no, no. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for the kind words. And, and, oh, Chris Clark. Wait, hold on, Chris Clark. Did you want to say anything to the to the new champs, the Shire Wolves? Oh, uh, Clark and Rachel, you know, I have the most utmost respect for both of you ladies. You are fantastic. And I, I just cannot wait to see you actually retain this belt until the inevitable when you go up against Critically Acclaimed. I know that's probably <laughs> going to happen. Uh, if it does, there he uh, goes. I shouldn't uh, even I, given him the off. <laughs> I apologize, <laughs> but you know what? I, I am so happy for both of you. You guys deserve this, and uh, yeah, uh, just congratulations to both of you and to keep rocking. It's fantastic. This is just great. thank you, thank, thank you very you. much. Well, to all three champions, we do appreciate y'all for coming on, and I'm sure it will not be the last time, and we appreciate it again. No problem. See you guys later. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Thanks guys. Thank y'all. By the way, Rachel gets massive points for the Revenge of the Jedi poster. Massive <laughs> points. I see it in the background. There. Massive points for that, by the way. Um, but, yes, incredible stuff, guys. Incredible stuff. Um, thank you so much. Thank you so much again. Congrats again, champs. Thanks. Bye.
So Frank Janish, that was an incredible, yeah, incredible lineup of incredible people. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm I'm ashamed that you're not going to live up to your bargain by getting that tattoo. But that's nor- neither here nor there. We do have <laughs> other things to discuss, though. Couple. We do have other things to discuss. A couple. So uh, why don't we get to why don't we get to those news items real quick um, before we before we wrap up? Because I yeah. do have I do have something special that I need to talk to you about. But why don't oh, you boy. continue oh, first? You're not pregnant, are you? How do you know? <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so <laughs> some news items kind of uh, trickled out of Collider Live. Um, if you guys aren't aware, Collider Live started uh, this past week with Christian and Riley and Ellis. Yeah, and, and that Kuga garbage Bulgang. person, Makuga. Oh, Her yeah, continue. I'm sure you have words. Um, but one thing uh, that that Harloff brought up that I had no idea about was this notion that, not a notion, but a, a fact that Snyder, Jeff Snyder, would submit questions to the Schmodown under an alias. And yeah. so that in hopes that maybe just by chance he'd get a question that he submitted so he'd know the answer. This completely blew my mind when I heard it. And I was like, damn, that is smart. <laughs> and uh, I can't hate because there's no rule against it. Because anyone can submit a, a question a to the question. Schmodown. Yeah. So um, the fact that he utilized that that uh, avenue to somehow maybe get a question that he knew the answer to already because he submitted it. I thought it was brilliant. Um, and I just, I have to give props where props is deserved on that one. So, you know, in wrestling, th- th- okay, there's a heel, right? We all know what a heel is, but there are, there are different types of heels, right? There's the big dominating heel, like a Brock Lesnar, right? And then there's something that's called a chicken shit heel. And those are the heels that will take every, every opportunity they can to bend the rules, break the rules, cheat the system uh, in order to retain their championships or to retain their position uh, in the roster or on the show. And I would like to think that that move by Jeff Snyder is one of the best chicken shit heel moves (laughs) I've ever heard of. And I applaud him for it. I love it. I absolutely love it. I think that he's smart. He's an opportunist. He's sneaky, he's smarmy, and that's why he was a part of one of the greatest teams of all time because he did whatever it took to win. He might th- and then you know what that else what that else that says is it shows that he was not just a um, a guy who didn't really take it seriously and oh he gave sure. up in that match. This guy cared. Yeah. And he cared immensely. Yeah, he ended up getting some questions he didn't submit, so he quit. So that's right. No, that's not true. That's not true. <laughs> um, another what thing. Yeah. yeah, another thing I wanted to bring up was because um, last week I did it on the show, and or I said it on the show rather that I couldn't really figure out Mara. Like, I, I assume she's there to win, but she has this. Other than you persona. being a hater. Yes, that's true. Uh, other, you know, she has this persona that like she's not really interested, but. I, I like I couldn't just figure it out, but again on Collider Live, Roca said something that that caught my attention. And he was basically saying, "Well, first of all, a that Damerel is going to be in Mara's uh, corner, and Jason Inman understands that. But he, you know, he's going to defend his Inner Geekdom title at the live event on September eighth. Yes. Um, but the other thing he said was that Roca was like, "Don't believe this act." that Mara is disinterested, you know, she's ready to go, and that, you know, Roka's like, if Inman can get past that kind of front that Mara puts up, you know, and not f- fall into a lull, you know, he should be all right. But um, I'm glad Roka said that because I was just wondering it last week. Like, I don't, don't really know. And now no, with this I'll- little tidbit from Roka, it gets a little more light onto Mara. And I have to also real quick just say that um, Mara hasn't really talked a whole lot about the Schmodown off her Twitter, and she was a little bit more vocal, obviously, with um, the tournament title match that she had against Kalinowski, and now the win with Shirewolves here, so a little more vocal in terms of the Schmodown. I just wasn't sure. I wasn't saying, oh, she's not, she's not, she doesn't want to do it. I was just, I was just trying to figure it out where she, where she laid, and uh, uh, with this little tidbit from Roka, I got a little more insight, which was interesting. You know, um, I also have it on good authority that Mara Kanopic is one of the people who take the game the most seriously from what I've heard. Okay. I mean, we're talking Rachel Cushing, Clark Wolf, Sam Levine levels of locked in for it. Uh, as Chris Clark exhales at my proclamation, I appreciate it, Chris. Uh, <laughs> but uh, she takes it very. Yeah, you think that a lot. <laughs> no, you yeah, think a lot needed, of things, Chris. Chris Clark. You think a lot of things. All right, brother. Um, 
but you know, I, I know that she takes the game seriously. And 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 f- did you have another news item? Because I have some that that's very uh, pressing. One last thing, and it's, okay. it's probably people have already heard about it, but the Jurassic Park exhibition match going to happen at the end of the month here. I guess it's next week. Um, Christian touted it as one of the greatest things he's ever seen. I think it's well, between Cody and Perry, and it's an Iron Man match style, right? So. Uh, apparently this is gonna just gonna blow the doors off people. So if you're not subscribed, I believe to the ten dollar level and you want to see this amazing Jurassic Park Iron Man match, I suggest you sign up to get that match. Or if you're a patron, you'll see it below the tier. You'll see it a couple weeks after that. So I know Christian is a promoter, right? Yeah. And promoters tend to overhype, right? They do. They 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 tend to tell you everything's the greatest thing ever. I will say. Every time Christian has told me this is one of the greatest matches ever, he's been 100% accurate. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's I, true. I don't, doubt, I don't doubt the Jurassic Park th- uh, match is something to behold. And I enjoyed the underground Fatal Five way. If y'all didn't see that, that was a crazy match too on the Patreon. I did enjoy that as well. Now, Frank, a couple things before we close here. Sure. Just, just two things I have. First of all, it is good to be back in front of the the audience. I did have to take an adventure. I got a last minute tip, and and the trail, the trail did not run dry. I oh, did no. find out. I did find out. You know, very. That's, that's weird because you were on a beach when we last saw you. So. And I and I fainted actually. Oh. You did. And um, I did. I fainted, and I did find out the information. I know. You found. You, I know what. I know. I know the dirt. Oh I know the gosh. dirt, but I but but I cannot reveal it. Of course, I can't tell what you. What a cocktail! I can't tell you. I can't tell you. Excuse your language, Christopher oh. Repilio, <laughs> Maximilian <You're not> <laughs> Powers. Um, what a crazy thing that Chris Clark just said. We're having such a great family show. Um, I've been sworn to secrecy. I had to make a deal uh, to where I, I traded off for some information for some information, and I have to keep it secret. But I do know. I do know what's happened, but I can give you a hint. Okay. I can give you a hint. In a, in a cryptic sense, it all comes to a head in a spectacular fashion. That's all I can tell you. That's all I can tell you, but I, that, I can drop one of those bombs. So not Portland. <laughs> well, Portland was a diversion, you know. <laughs> okay, okay. They sent me there to send me somewhere else. But it, But I do have information. And it all comes to head in a spectacular fashion. That is my clue. That is a verbatim, the clue that I was given. It all comes to a head in a spectacular fashion. Now, the last thing. I don't know what that even means. I am completely dumbfounded. Well, you know what? Gonna... Why don't you go pick up a Dan Brown book, crack open the Da Vinci Code, <laughs> and try to figure it out, all right? You know, I but... never finished the book, but okay. That's <laughs> oh, true. the book is the book's way better than I the I like the book, okay. but I never finished the book. But anyway. Oh, the book's great. Book's great. Now, speaking of great films, um, we do know that there's going to be a match coming up, not in the movie trivia showdown proper, not in the inner geekdom division, not in the Star Wars League, not in the team league, um, but it, there's going to be the second ever rundown showdown. Now, being really? that I yes, being that I won the first one, um, <laughs> I decided that it was only right to give you an opportunity, Frank, to <laughs> you know to try to do something. And you won the showdown showdown, but does that really count? I don't know. Mm, I don't know. But as far as I see it, you know, I'm 1-0. and You're 0-1 in the rundown schmodown. And I thought that, you know, obviously we set the stage for a Back to the Future match. Yeah. And I thought that just having another match for bragging rights sake is a little boring, Janish. So over the next couple of weeks, mm-hmm. uh, every week actually, I will show one thing on this show that will be part of the prize package for the Back to the Future match that Frank and I will have, the Back to the Future Rundown Schmodown will have a prize package. So we're not just playing for pride and for bragging rights. We're playing for actual, tangible assets. And I'm going to reveal the very first item that's going to be a part of the prize purse that will go to the winner of that match. Now, Chris Clark, why don't you tell them who is hosting that? Con- can we tell them who's hosting? Is that I can, fun? I can indeed, because they both have confirmed with me, and we're going to be working around them. Hosting the... Uh, uh, second ever rundown schmodown will be William the Beast Bibiani, who was just here on this episode. I'm and shocked. The Captain Robert Meyer Burnett. Whoa. It's going to be great Whoa. to have Rob on because he has been the on the captain. rundown. Yep. Rob's going to make a return. It's 
It's going to be yeah, pestilence. Know that. <laughs> but yeah, um, it's going to be fun. It's going to be great. And it's going to be airing on Back to the Future Day, October 21st, which I think is a Sunday. So it's going to be a nice Sunday. Thank you, stream. Sunday. Mark yep. your calendars. And so here's the first part of the prize package in the second ever rundown schmodown back to the future match. And here it is right now. I'm going to reveal it. It is a monopoly back to the future game board game. We're going to have this. Is going yeah. to be, you already have this. I already have it. I have two of them. You have, why do you have two of them? <laughs> one, one to keep in the wrapping one to play with. Duh. Class well, collector stuff, man. Hold on, keep talking for one second, Frank. Yeah. Keep talking for yeah, one. Yeah, I second. got, I got two. I got, I got. I was a uh, in a grad bag one year. I said, hey, I want a Monopoly set, and uh, better be Back to the Future. And two people got me uh, a Back to the Future set, so I got two of them. One in the package, one to play with, and it's been great ever since. So uh, I never get bored. Always play by myself, and I always win. This is gold. So, this yeah, is gold. Well, That's what happens? What's funny though about you saying that mm -hmm. is, um. I also have two of them. You have two. <laughs> <laughs> I, thought, I thought I should maybe full yeah. disclosure. I'm starting to think they come in twos now. Like when you when you like they don't come just separately as one. It might be a prize pack, but that's just the first. Yeah. That's a that's a, what we like to call a ski taste uh, on the streets, and that that is one of the things that are going to be involved in that. So I just wanted to throw that out there, and I just wanted to also say, um, in, in all honesty, in all sincerity, um, this was an incredible week. And we have a big week coming up here very soon because we are inching near, Frank, the 100th episode oh, yeah. of the Schmodown Rundown. This is um, crazy. I mean, technically, technically speaking, episode back on 92 was 100 because we did, uh, very early on we did some non-numbered episodes. So uh, you could – we're not counting those, obviously, because we're at 90. Nine today. It's next and uh, yeah, holy <laughs> shit. A hundred. Um, that's pretty crazy. Uh, I have no idea what we're doing for that. I, I just no. think we're probably we should just play Back to the Future Monopoly the whole time, I think. I, I kinda like that idea, but yeah. to all yeah. we're, we'll have something special and we might have some special guests popping in to that show as well. And I also just one more time want to shout out William the Beast Bibiani, the new singles champion. Uh classy Clark Wolf. It was such a pleasure to have Clark on the yes. show. I've never gotten to speak with Clark. So that was a fun time. And of course, the crusher, Rachel Cushing, uh, oh, with the sweet Revenge of the Jedi poster in the back. Um shout out to all three of them for making time for us. I, and I and I appreciate Clark putting us over the way she did. But it really we do this because we're fans of them. Yes. Uh, and, and we do this because we appreciate what yeah. they do and we appreciate when they take time to come on the show and just give us some insight, some inside baseball to the movie trivia showdown. So, Frank, do you have anything that you'd like to add to this wonderful live broadcast? Uh, yeah, we, we talked about it earlier. Uh, if it's, nothing goes wrong when it's live. And uh, I had no idea <laughs> how we were going to uh, navigate this episode because – People were coming in and out. You know, we didn't know how it was going to flow, but it always works out somehow, some way. And a lot of that has to go to Chris Clark. Yes. Um, I saw him popping up some uh, clips while during certain things were being said that were very relevant. I was like, damn, Chris, you're pulling up. You know, He's Johnny on the spot with these clips. And uh, I appreciate all the hard work that Chris does week in and week out, especially on a live show. Um, no one works harder for, for his guys than Chris Clark. Thank you so much, I Frank. Yeah, and, and you know, I, I want to plug the Brad Gilmore show was, was out this week with Aaron Turner, and we, yeah, we yeah. spoke about we spoke about both of you, including Chris Clark and and Chris. Yeah, obviously you're the best, and to put it in words that you might understand, Chris Clark, you are fantastic, and you rock this sucker until the end of time. But <laughs> I am Brad Gilmore, joined always by Frank Janish, who you can follow at FrankieJ29 on Twitter. You can follow Chris Clark at Chris Clark 8788 I believe those numbers don't have anything to do with anything. And you can follow me <laughs> at Brad Gilmore. Make sure you follow us on Twitter as well, at SchmodownRD and Schmodown Rundown on Instagram. This is episode 99. Next week, it's going to be 100. It's going to be live again. Same time, same place on Collider Podcast. And we'll see you then. Ooh, yeah.